Down low to Harris. Harris draws a crowd. Can't get it to go. Don's doubling up down low now when they do touch. Here's Parker. Parker in to end with the basket and one. Boy, how, how do you like D.N. Parker? Coming off a great win, or great week, rather, and D.N. Parker playing terrific. And he's the one guy that Don's have, I think, can create his own shot without any difficulty. And here's D.N. Parker with a power move down the middle and a good job to get the ball. Uh, he knew he, he knew the foul was coming, and he just hoped and got it up on the glass and got the roll. Well, they had been living and dying on the three. Yeah, th th this was their, their first two-point score in the last How long? 13 and a half minutes. How do you like that? Has the game been going that long? Wow. Now that's hard to believe. So Mark Few has seen a good-sized lead drop down now to five and a 21 to 11 run over the last eight minutes for the hometown Dons. Got to give a little help here as Pangos get some penetration. Michael Hart back in the lineup. He's a kind of a steadying force for the Zags. Now Pangos. Dons have really stepped it up on both ends. Pangos for three. Tough shot, but he makes that shot a lot. Now the Dons with a real opportunity. Pangos is over three. I think reset your formation and have some poise here. You may, now look at this. You've got Olenek, who at seven feet is on the perimeter defending. Hard to shoot over. Well, it certainly is, but you might have a, match, a, a kind of a mismatch right down in here if you can find a guy, but you can't. Now it's two on one. Pangos on the wing. That's Hart to the basket. You love what Pangos did. He kind of veered off to his left there and created the space to give it to Hart for the easy score. Tollefson for three. Not this time. And the rebound, Pangos. And now the Zags a chance to back up baskets here. Down low. Got to get a foul on Olenek. And Parker and Olenek kind of woofing at each other here. And I'm sure the officials will take a close look at that. Here it is again. Now all the way to the basket for Deanne Parker and one. Seven point game. We'll be back. Seven. Well, West Coast Conference fans can get up to the minute news, videos, and championship information by logging on to the official West Coast Conference website at WCCSports.com. Find exclusive conference gear and follow where your school stands in the latest Commissioner's Cup standings by bookmarking WCCSports.com. Here a seven-point game when it looked like the Zags were going to run away and hide from the Dons, but... Dons have had a penchant for doing that. They just kind of hang around and usually have at least one good run in them during the course of a game. Well, they, they've got five threes in the game. They've only made eight field goals, and five of them have been three-point opportunities. And how fitting it would be if San Francisco could play well on Phil Smith Day. They're honoring the great, great Phil Smith who passed away much too early, but he was an outstanding guard here at San Francisco in the 70s. And uh, they are, it's Phil Smith Day here on the Hilltop. He played for a good friend of mine. Yes, he did. <laughs> you. Oh, oh, that guy. <laughs> From the corner, bar up for three. Not this time, but Hart fights for the rebound. That's the kind of stuff he does for you. Olenek open for three. Look out. Can't get it off the right side. And finally, it's knocked off the hands of Hart. Not a bound. So coming up empty once again of the Zags three times in a row now. Kelly Olenek so far today, 10 points on five of five. He's doing his part. Three rebounds. Olenek, though, really as advertised. And the other thing that really goes unnoticed many times is his ability to defend on the outside. That you knows a big guy, got quick feet, and he can come out and, you know, if it's a smaller player, he can do a pretty good job on him on the perimeter. Now they switch up. Dewey looks for a mismatch, so he can get it. As Dower drops back, though, on Rodgers, and Rodgers double dribble. Fifth USF turnover. That's just the presence of Dower defending Rodgers. 
as Rodgers is thinking, you know, Dower's a shot blocker, so I've got to come up with a special move. And, you know, he makes one of those unforced errors. And the kind you can no afford to make against Gonzaga. You've got to get shot attempts every time down. See the turnover numbers, only two for the Zags, five for USF, not an inordinate number. I thought a big key for Gonzaga coming into this game was, you know, 12 or less turnovers, and they're certainly on pace to do that. And, and again, that's just a big man making a big man's move. I mean, there's, you know, there's no great script for that. Well, you could drop a guy from the outside to come down to help, but then you leave Pangos or Bell wide open. Well, they're dueling again. The Dons have come up with some acrobatic take it to the rim, double clutch scores to keep themselves in this game. Look at Cody Doolin. And he does this as well as anybody. He's a three-year starter here at USF and an outstanding young guy. You know, may have aspirations, Barry, to be a coach, and I think he'd be a very good one. Just yeah. has a good feel for the game of basketball and makes a difficult shot under duress. A real student of the game. Olenek yanks down to miss free throw. Now Pangos. And a block. Very close. They say Tollefson moved the feet. It's only the fourth team foul against San Francisco. That's a good play by Tollefson. Why not take an opportunity to see if you can get the call? That's a good, looks like he was moving just a little bit. Oh, I split second earlier, if he moves his feet, I think he'd get that call. Here's Hart. They don't come out guard Hart. Now Dower. Dower's been very quiet on the offensive end. Look, it looks like Doolin, who's not guarding Hart's trying to wild card inside. You know, to just get off your guy and see if you can help out. Here's Dower Look. working on Dickerson. Turn to the basket too hard. And we're going to get a foul over the top. They may get an Olenek. I think it is Olenek over the top. And Olenek will uh, get the last minute and one second of the half off. As Kronofsky comes back onto the floor. It's interesting that Mark Hugh, when he, he found Karnowski, you know, in, in the recruiting wars, he's really looking at Pangos, and, and the assistant for Gonzaga, Tommy, Tommy Lloyd. Lloyd, is looking at Pangos in a Canadian tournament, and there's Karnowski who's playing against him, and there's Karnowski playing, and he kind of thought, well, you know what? Here, here's another guy <laughs> that might be able to help us, and that's how they first saw Karnowski, and well, yeah, here he is. Interestingly enough, Harris was just on fire early in the game. Then Rex Walters brought Tollefson into the game, and Tollefson's now defending him. And since that time, Harris is 0 for 3. And he's had a couple of shots blocked by Tollefson inside. Trying to post up Tollefson right now. And that's Konoski with a good look, but he comes up short. And a rebound batted around, comes down into the hands of Hart, a reach-in foul. Well, you see, Barry, how every defensive rebound is a struggle for San Francisco. They've got to get all five guys in there to rebound the ball. If that's Tollefson, it's his third. So now he stays in the game with the three fouls, but at least he's been a guy that's been competitive on the glass. So now let's see if they go to Karnowski with Tollefson with three. Karnowski on the baseline now. Now, San Francisco's got fouls to take as the shot clock's winding down. They can definitely get aggressive and, and take a foul. And Mark Few wants a timeout. Not happy with how Pangos was handling the ball and comes out, meets him right at about the center line. Mark Few, very quiet guy and just a really good guy, but you don't want him on your wrong side. There's Tollison earlier in the game when he makes a nice three from the outside. And here's Doolin who really sets everybody up. I mean, he finds guys on the perimeter. And, and, he, and with his penetration, you know, Adams made that shot. But Cody Doolin, it's really tough for San Francisco to take Doolin out of the game because he's the one that runs the show. You see, see Orlando Smart, Gerald Walker, two terrific guards that, that played here. And there's Doolin uh, in terms of career assists. Of course, Orlando Smart. At 902, I think That's he's safe. Good. I think he's safe. <laughs> that, record, that, that record is not going to be broken. But Dolan is, uh, Doolin rather, as you said, since day one, since he walked onto the campus, has been the starter. And uh, here are the guys in the studio talking about what a gym rat he is. We've been saying that now for three years, and it's exactly what he is. And you know, Barry, I thought it was kind of cool what he said in uh, WCC this week when they interviewed him. And 
And uh, I know you had a chance to talk to him earlier. He, he thought it was kind of nice coming in the gym all by himself at night and thinking, you know what? There's been a lot of great players <laughs> that have played on this floor. It's Phil Smith Day. You know, and Phil is one of them, but I mean, you think the last number one team in the country that was a West Coast Conference team was the San Francisco team back in 77, 78, when, you know, you had Hardy and Boynes and Cartwright and Chubby Cox and Marlon, Marlon Redman. As I recall, and they were undefeated up to the last yes, game. Yes, they, they were. They were. Going into Notre Dame. Yeah, yeah. that's true. But, but still, Gonzaga has a chance to come up as, the, as, again, the number one team in the country. And there's the shot of Phil Smith. Now, Phil didn't play with Cartwright. Phil played earlier. And Phil kind of laid the groundwork when he played with the late Kevin Rastani, you know, and Eric Fernston. And, you know, the great guard combination of Mike Quick and Phil Smith, which I still think is one of the better guard combinations ever to play at San Francisco. Maybe the, still the best. Uh, and, and that was a pivotal reason why, you know, that team was so successful. That was the Bob Gaylor team. And, of course, Bob did an unbelievable job here at San Francisco, led them to the number one in the country. And I just kind of tagged along and was around. <laughs> I don't and there's that. Phil. Now, Phil played at your alma mater. Phil played at Washington High School. He yep. was a high school center and, quite frankly, was not highly recruited coming out of high school. But Phil immediately adapted when he got to USF and in those years he played on the freshman team and he and Rastani were on that freshman team and as soon as he came as a sophomore I mean he was an, he was an all-conference player for three years and by the way his his rookie year with the Golden State Warriors they did